Hi, and welcome back for another daily dose of anime recaps. In this episode, we'll be covering the first four episodes of the newly released anime Kakagarui Twin. Mary Sayatome is a new student in Hayako Academy that prides itself in its rich culture of gambling. Trapped in the endless spiral of gambling games and money-making machines, Mary must fight her way through the tricks and cheating methods of other gamblers to win her way into the top position of the school. However, she doesn't grip into the gambling mania of the school. Before we begin, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button so you never miss an update from us. We are greeted with a cherry and blossom fall voice in the opening of the anime with a girl named Sozura Hanatamari, who introduces us to the one and only Hayakeo Private Academy. It's Hayakeo's 121st anniversary, and joy is in the air. The Academy prides itself on its power and good reputation. However, unlike other schools, Hayakeo isn't your normal, everyday place of study. Here, to raise your reputation and position, you don't need to study all night or have powers. Oh no. You just need to be the very best gambler this academy has ever seen. However, if you lose all your money, you cannot pay the required donations to the student council and thus are thrown below the hierarchy and treated as a house pet. Boys are called Fido and girls are given the title of Mittens and are obliged to follow every single order that's given to them. And I mean every single order. Hanatamari introduces herself as the girl getting splashed by water by Kokoro Ayura, who was the top of the class in gambling, which makes us realize that Hanamatari is pretty much the house pet. We get a surprise entry, and it's honor student Mary Sayatomi, who has recently been transferred to the academy. Being a complete amateur in gambling, she happens to be challenged by Ayura in a very simple card game. Of course, it doesn't come to us as a surprise that Mary loses her first game against Ayura, who cheats and makes Mary fall into 200,000 yen debt. Well, that didn't go so well for our newbie. Luckily, to her rescue comes Hanamatari, who offers her money to play another game, and this time Miss Mary isn't one to get cheated on. The sly vixen plays a fake hand in the card game and ends up winning the match against the good-for-nothing cheater, Ayura. This makes Hanamatari sky-high happy and imagines Mary as her knight in shining armor, coming to rescue her. It's been over a week now and things aren't going Mary's way, who thought it would be a stone's throw to get friends and be famous in this new academy. She has the looks, the cute nails, even the pretty smile, but no one wants to be friends with her. It's flashback time and Mary recalls the reason why she even transferred to this new academy in the first place. The pitiful mindset of society that has divided them into winners and losers, she now desires one thing, and it's to become the winner of Hayakeo Private Academy. Her daydreaming is stopped midway by a shy Hanamatari, who seems to lack the words to talk to the bossy Mary. Nonetheless, she musters up the courage and asks her if they could be friends, since no one wants to be friends with a pitiful mitten. This further pisses Mary off since she can't stand pitiful people. Keeping her anger aside, Mary asks her to show her the ropes around the academy, which cheers Hanamatari up. Hanatamari explains to her about the ethics and ways of gambling in the academy, and how 200,000 yen is considered very low, and if she wishes to make her name, she must gamble at higher stakes. This lights up an idea in Mary's mind, who asks about the after-school gambling rooms, and in this way, she's led to the library prep room. Wanting to start from the lowest gambling room available so she can gamble her way to the top and become the best gambler ever. We're still surprised by the twin personalities of Mary. They enter the library prep room and are met by the sight of a dorky girl named Yukimi Togakushi, who seems to be the president of the literary club. Before they could start talking, a bossy and dominant female named Juraku enters the library with her pet named Mikura and orders Yukimi to empty the room since she hasn't paid the fees. We find out that the bossy woman is the chair of the Public Morals Committee and in charge of gambling fees. Mary butts in and says she wants to take the room and will pay a higher fee. This perks up the interest of Juraku and so agrees on the condition that Yukimi and Mary both gamble. Winner takes the room, while the loser, well, you know the consequences, is kicked out. The stakes start off at 1 million yen, a sum that poor Mary doesn't have and so is forced to take a loan from the chair. The game starts, tension is high, anyone could win. Mary does the maths of how she could have the upper hand. 
but to her surprise, she loses. Not wanting to back out, Mary takes another loan of one million from Juraku, who agrees, but on the condition that if she loses this time, she must be her pet. God save anyone who becomes the pet of such a ruthless woman. The final round of three hit dice commences, and the girls start writing their guesses down on the cards. We find out that Juraku doesn't want Mary to win and wants her as her slave, and so her pet Makura switches the cards to allow Yukumi to win. The cards are handed over, and before they could be shown, Mary spills her drink all over her card, which pisses off Mikura. Nonetheless, the cards are shown, and to everyone's amazement, Mary has won, and it's all thanks to the simple trick of spilling water that was mixed with nail polish remover, which changed the choice she had on her card. Mary proceeds to tell how she found out about Mikura's trick of cheating, and so fought fire with fire. This amusing spectacle makes Jiraku clap and lets Mary keep the gambling den and kicks Yukimi out. It seems Jiraku didn't care much about the outcome and just wanted to see how Mary would perform and hope to one day see her cry her eyes out when she loses. Jiraka is one crazy woman. Mary agrees to be friends with Hanada Matari and asks her to remove her pet tag because she doesn't want anyone to consider them weak since they will work their way up to be champions. We're now in the student council office and it seems that there have been some disturbances lately. The members sit together and discuss their new agenda, which is Madari Ikashima, a.k.a. the Destroyer of Dens. This girl seems to have a weird crazy look about her, has been winning non-stop by taking over seven gambling dens, out of which five were former council members. But that isn't even the start of their worries, since Ikashima refuses to pay up the den fees and shows no interest to abide by the council rules. This doesn't sit right with Karari who orders Mihura Taki to handle the situation as diligently as possible. Kirari notices Juraku smiling and asks why she's so happy, to which Juraku tells them that they have very promising first-year students this time. We're back to Hanada Mari and Mary, who are busy changing in their locker room, but Hanada Mari finds out that someone has lined razors in her shoes simply because she's a mitten. This angers Mary, who is now more than determined to change her friend's fate. They enter the library prep room, and who do they find? None other than Yukimi, who seems to be busy cleaning up with a rather too delightful smile on her face. Mary demands her to leave, but both Hanata Mari and Yukimi pout and display puppy dog eyes and convince Mary to let her stay. They now sit to come up with a plan to earn enough money to not only pay off the fees of the gambling den, but to also free Hanata Mari from the house pet position. We have now been switched to a more intense atmosphere and it's the moment where the student council member, Mihura Taki, makes her way with the two others to the den of Madari Ikashima. Madari seems to be having one hell of a time with her members who look as crazy as her. Miharu Taki, with a straight face, demands the den fees, which amounts to 5 million yen. This demand just brings out an uproar of laughter from the girls who say they don't have any money to pay up. Before things could get serious, Midari proposes that Mahura Taki gamble against her, and if she wins, she can take the money. Otherwise, she should find her way out of the den. Miharu Taki takes her up on the offer and chooses to play a simple game of dice roll, where she has to guess between an odd or even number. The dice is thrown by Midari with a devilish smile on her cheeky face, and Miharu Taki wastes not even a second to say it's an even number. Miharu Taki guesses it right and makes her way out of the den, but before leaving also explains how she won. We find out that Miharu Taki foresaw the trick of Midari of switching the dice and thus, by clear judgment, had chosen even. Midari throws in 30 million yen on the table and asks her to play again, but this time Miharu Taki leaves and says she isn't one bit interested in playing mind games. A beautiful entrance sign right outside the library prep room attracts two naive young men who follow it inside and find three beautiful and attractive girls in maid costumes. Let's see what they have up their sleeve now. The two young men are introduced to a very simple game by the attractive looking girls in maid costumes. In it, the customer gets to choose the dice and then the dealer. They both then throw the dice simultaneously. The one dice with the bigger number wins. So easy it feels like taking candy from a baby. The boy falls into the trap and bet 10,000 but loses the first round. In the second round, he chooses the dealer's red dice and wins. This pumps him up to go for a third round and pretty much loses over 50,000 yen. 
By the end of the day, the girls are loaded with heavy cash and their earnings for one day amount to 300,000, which makes their 1.7 million yen target just a stone's throw away. In the student council room, Juraka approaches Aoi Mibuomi, who seems to be busy playing a video game with the little Runa, and tells him about Mary's gambling den and to go pay her a little visit. It's the start of day two, and Hanata Mari and Yukimi open up the den, while Mary goes out for some work. Their first visitor is none other than Aoi, who, with a very friendly smile, asks to play a game with them. Once Mary comes back, she is astounded to find out that Hanata Mari is three million up in winning, and that, too, in just the second round. Aoi sees her and approaches her with complete happiness beaming on his face, and proceeds to tell her he cracked her gaming code with spiteful glee. They play the third round with Aoi betting four million and without a doubt wins. The girls are in shock, and sadly Mary gives him his one million winnings, but he declines and instead asks her for a favor. A favor to help him destroy the student council president. Who would have expected that from a member of the student council himself? We're given one fine view of the student council president with her lifeless eyes and intimidating looks. All three girls are in shock since they could never have expected Aoi to make such a demand, and that, too, of such a high level. Mary questions him why he wants to go to such lengths, to which he tells them his purpose is to wipe out the house pet tag that losers have to wear around their neck. The president created the system to degrade and demotivate those who can't pay the student council fee, and thus have to live their lives in utter humiliation, and he wants to dismantle the system. If she accepts the offer, then Aoi will give her the million yen. Otherwise, they'll part ways. And it looks like Mary didn't accept the offer and is now frustrated over how to come up with another way to earn money and pay the den fees. She makes her way out and is met by another shocker. A notice on the board announcing the annual donation deadline for student council, and if they don't pay up, then they shall be turned into house pets throughout graduation. Trapped just like a rat, Mary approaches Aoi's room and is astounded to see Hanata Mari and Yukimi already present there. It seems Aoi knew Mary would come and thus invited her friends beforehand. He takes them through a door, and the girls are met by a sight which they could never have imagined. A room filled with house pets, boys and girls working to gamble and make money. Aoi explains his mastermind plan to throw off the student council president. If a hundred house pets work to make 10,000 yen, by the end, they are able to produce one million, and so buy their way out as house pets one by one, and so break the system and taboo created. Aoi holds Mary with a serious look on his face and asks her for her help to save the innocent souls trapped. The tense atmosphere cheers up and a girl hops on stage to announce the 50th annual coupling party to help all these single bachelors find the perfect girl. The spectacle makes Mary question how they're going to overthrow the president and if Aoi has gone totally nuts. Nonetheless, the show must go on and the game of coupling is explained. A team of five girls and boys sit together and in the first stage talk to get to know each other. Then in stage two, they shall consult who to pick and finally in stage three, they shall choose the lady or man. If the man picks the right lady, then she will pay up, otherwise the guy has to pay up. Sounds pretty neat. We just hope there aren't any hidden tricks in this, too. The girls are paired with two other girls by the help of Makura Sado, who seems to be the helping hand there, along with Juraka, who sits taking in the whole spectacle. The two other girls are Kurumi and Inui, who seem pretty laid back and just want to play for fun, except for Inui, who wishes to play to get a boyfriend, it seems. But let's not talk about Inui's past experience in the game, who loses her mind remembering how she got rejected in the past. The girls decide that they're playing for money and not to get a boyfriend, so they have their priorities straight. The first round of the game begins and everyone is introduced to each other, and it seems all the guys are hot except with the exception of one. The second round commences and the girls decide on who to choose, and so go for the complete opposite guy to not end up coupling. On their way back, Mary stops Hanata Mari and tells her to choose some other random guy, one which they didn't discuss in front of the girls, just in case there's an imposter among them. The results are announced, and this is received as a complete shocker for Mary, since all five girls are coupled with all five boys. 
Mary loses her mind and blames everyone for cheating, to which Juraka jumps and stops her, telling her not to be blinded by her own failure. Mary knew if she played any further, she would lose all her money and would end up as a house pet. Karumi offers to give her money, but in return she must pick the sleepover option, which is pretty much like selling one's body to the guy. Total panic erupts in Mary's mind, who doesn't know who to trust and feels like everyone is conning her to become a house pet. Mary sees her whole life falling apart and doesn't know how to get it back in one place. Juraka orders the five couples to play the next round on the same team, simply because it amuses her to see their shocked faces. She even throws in a few words to Mary and tells her to not just stand there and go register, otherwise she's pretty much a house pet for them. Mary decides to quit and doesn't care one bit about the outcome, especially since this whole game is rigged and filled with liars and cheaters. This makes Hanada Mari cry like a child and she goes on to tell Mary that they were supposed to be the champions together and that the true Mary would never give up and leave. Nonetheless, the cringe sight further grosses out Mary and she calls Hanada Mari a cheater and deceiver. Keeping her composure now, Mary comes up with a plan and it involves Hanada Mari being away from the group while they discuss it. As Mary goes over the plans to pick the boys, Kurumi watches the spectacle from behind and with a devilish smile, understands the game that Mary's trying to play. Over on the boys' side, they get word of the girls' choices by the help of their so-called friend, and are now more than ready to get the game going. Registrations have ended, and Mary is 100% confident that they'll win this. The girls get ready to choose their options to either pay in money or offer something else in return. To which Mary, Hanada Mari, and Yukimi opt for the sleepover option which gets the boys rolling with excitement, especially since they knew the answers beforehand. Inui, with a cheeky smile, chooses her man, and we find out that she is, in fact, the traitor who's been leaking the information to the boys for a lot of money in return. It's time for Kurumi to select her man, and she doesn't go with the plan, and instead opts for someone else, which surprises Inui as well as the boys. Things start to unfold fast, and Mary, Hanada Mari, and finally, Yukimi choose their men, and it's all different. Inui's plan has been foiled, and this makes Mary crazy happy since, now, she has won over 2 million yen. Jiraku applauds the quick thinking of Mary. Mary, however, explains how she broke the code, and it all started with her keeping a close eye on Inui. She even changed all the girls' seating positions and kicked out Hanada Mari from the group while they discussed the whole agenda. But most importantly, Mary knew that the two friends would trust her and would understand the hints that she threw at them, which they luckily did, and played along. All that risk certainly paid off, and now they are rich with cash. This puts an end to the coupling game, and the girls go home a million times richer. Back in his office, Aoi knew that Mary would pull it off and so finds it necessary that she be a crucial part of their plan to overthrow the student council president. As the girls make their way up to the den, Mary, with a sad face, bows down and apologizes to the girls for her behavior earlier and for kicking Hanada Mari out. But all is forgiven and the girls join together to find out ways to become richer. Will Mary and her friends be able to overthrow the tight system kept by the student council president? What other tricks does Mary have up her sleeve to finally become the champion of the Academy? But most importantly, what more surprises will we expect from the student council who seem adamant to bring hell to Mary and her friends? We'll find out in the next couple of episodes of Kakagarui Twin. And if you're a subscriber with notifications enabled, you'll find out soon enough.